ladies and gentlemen, I need to talk to you. I've not looked this up before this moment, just before hitting this record button, because I just finished another video. And I was going to do a video explaining what I'm getting ready to do, because let me explain to y'all, it is very dangerous. And I'm not saying it's very dangerous because I'm trying to make myself out to be somebody who doesn't care about danger. I, I apologize. Let's make this larger. Um, no, we don't want that one to make it larger. Where is that at? Uh, no, I don't agree to your updated anything. Get out of here. You you don't control me. I control you, mother... I'm sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't need to see those uh, wannabe attorneys. Look, I need you guys to understand something. i done very little research on Quaitam. Okay, I call them QTAMs, but Quaitam lawsuits, I've done very little research on them. Why? Because I didn't have to. Well, I don't go by the stupid code. I could care less about the code. I go by the original act. Well, what's the original act? The Civil Rights Act of 1866. Go ahead and do your research. Do your research. All right, let's do this. I'm, um, I'm using a different browser because this browser is a whole lot better with the number of windows that I have to have open. Oh, come on, dude. And we're going to do, 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 do. Now, you see what it did? Brought us all the way over here. I didn't ask to be all the way over here. Now I got to find out where it is again. Oh, it's right here. So watch this. Hold on now. Okay. Now we're all under this umbrella. Okay. Just that simple. Now what I don't want, I'm going to go to Cornell Law, but I don't want the code. I could care less about the code. Okay. Now what I want is the original act. So I come down here to the bottom. Now, they'll give me this public law junk, but I want the statute. Okay, but this ain't the, this is not what QTAM, QUITAM comes from, but let's just go ahead and go here. And what's going to happen is you can't go there because this ain't going to give you nothing. Can't go here or here because you don't have an account with them. So we have to go here at 96, 7, 8, 7, resource no, that's the same page we just came from. Congress 96. This is Library of Congress, so 978. So let's see if we can pull it up. 978. Really quick. And no, I'm positively certain we're not going to be able to pull up public law because look at S300. Look at that. They're going smaller. Oh, we were supposed to be 96. Oh, no, maybe we're supposed to be 97. I didn't check. I didn't. I remember saying it, but that's my memory, ladies and gentlemen. It just doesn't hold on like that. So 97, 978. And as you notice, there ain't no 900s here. Okay, 97, 82, and 97. We have definitely 978, but it ain't giving me 978. So, because all they did was added it to the Civil Rights Act, let's do that again. Let's make sure of the section 978, 96. That's the problem. Okay, I apologize. I was right. I, it was 96. Whew. Sometimes. Okay, public law number. Let's go. Wait, I didn't ask you for all that. I said 96. 96. And let's see if we can find a 978. That's five. Wait a minute. Whew. Okay, that's why it took me to 97. But we're not going to be able to find it here because it's not going to take us to 978. So, again, because they amended another act. So, this, this, ain't, we're, this ain't how we're going to get there. Get on out of here now.
Because you're the biggest part of me. The melody is in the background. Uh, let's do this. 96, 978. You see how they're not giving it to us? Look at that. We, we got the right stat, but it ain't giving us the right stat. Okay, let's do this. Comma, P, D, D, F. It ain't supposed to be comma. It's supposed to be dot PDF. No, I don't want PDF. Sorry. Sorry, that's the wrong thing. Apologize. That's that's not what we want. 978 T-E-X-T. -T. Rain down on you so we can wash away. Okay, this is telling me this is the stat, but this ain't the stat because I'm looking at the numbers and this ain't that ain't the stat. See, that ain't the stat neither. That ain't the stat neither. I already know what I'd even see in the bottom here of the the act. So I'm not worried about it. I don't need to find it. Those of you who need to find it, y'all find it. But I don't go by the code. I only go by the law, which is the statutes. The statutes at law is only evidence of law. It's not the law, but I only go by that. All right, let's do this right here. This ain't taking me. This ain't giving me what I want. And the government, see, this 96877. Hopefully it is within this. Ladies and gentlemen, the Federal Reserve and the banks follow the Federal Reserve Act as amended March 9, 1933. The courts and everybody else is aware of this. However, when you are trying to follow it, they're ignoring you. Why? Because you're missing a step. Why? Because they've come up with procedures and policies and so forth to prevent you. However, ladies and gentlemen, uh-oh, I gotta shut some things off because this one over here, okay, there are two things going on, uh, both my systems, because of how we hooked them up, I have two, uh, what you call it, two what you call it, two solar arrays, and the other one I just turned on the freezers, I know it wasn't charged enough for me to turn on the freezers, but I turned on the freezer anyway, because I figured it would help, and as you can see, it didn't help. So I had to go and shut that solar array off, let it charge up, and then I'll turn it back on. 978, that's 996, 994. So let's see if we can get to 978. That's 97. How do we get from 96 to 97 that quick? Okay, we're going to stop right here because that's 976. And 977, 978. Well, look at that, False Claims Act. Well, we weren't, oh, I see why they mentioned the False Claims Act. We're not talking about false claims. We're talking about the, oh, oh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, the courts, it's against the law for anyone and everyone to make a copy, uh, not a copy, but a false claim. Okay, it, it's against the law. No one's allowed to do it. But it. This right here, the Attorney General diligently shall investigate a violation under Section 3729 of this title. If the Attorney General finds that a person has violated or is in violation of Section 3729, the Attorney General shall bring a civil action under this section against that person. The person shall be arrested and bail set at the... Wait, it's a civil action. Hold up. Ladies and gentlemen, under QTAM, a person can bring this and the individual is arrested. And the bill amount set for not more than $2,000 or two times the amount of damage sworn to in an affidavit by the Attorney General. Ladies and gentlemen, do you understand now i got to read over this because I don't have a choice now. Why? Because I'm getting ready to do a QTAM lawsuit, QTAM, QTAM lawsuit, and in the fashion of doing my QTAM lawsuit, ladies and gentlemen, so that you understand it, once the Attorney General says, hey, I, I'm not taking on this junk, okay, um, says 877, put 
978. And we're going to put that right there, put that right there, go all the way back up here, and we'll put F A L S E. I said climbs. Okay, claims. And this will be what I will save. Yes, I'll put this up there for you guys so you don't have to go through all that searching like I had to do. I will sacrifice. Okay. We, there are two things that I have to do, and I'll do it for you guys. Technically, anyone can bring a whistleblower complaint, but you guys can't bring the same whistleblower complaint as someone else. At first, I was afraid that somebody would try to scoop me. But then I'm talking about it on video, so who can scoop me? <laughs> this shows that I was there first. Uh-oh, Mama, he, he's trying to say he was there before us. You better believe it. I think we're going to get rid of this. Get out of here. Let's see. All right. And then we're going to get rid of this because we don't need it. Now, the first thing it takes us to is the False Claims Act. I understand why it takes us to the False Claims Act, but what I'm looking for is, I'll, I'll click on this. I want to see what this is as well, so I'll do both of them. Oh, 97258. That's why it wanted to take us to 97. Okay, that's what it was doing, and I need the, uh, this is the one I need. Government info, this is the one I need. The reason why is because this one's going to give us the whole thing. But this says Title, really? Title 31? Interesting. That's money and finance. I don't know why it's taking us to Title 31. And it says public law. Okay, because it's not just this public law. Okay, but it says an act codify and an act without substantive. All right. This is an act to revise, codify, and enact without substantive change certain general and permanent laws related to money and finance as Title 31, the U.S. Code, Money and Finance, being enacted by the House of Representatives of Congress assembled. Yes, but they cannot give someone else the authority to codify it. They have to codify it. That's the whole point. Congress can't give someone else to do its job. And it says, without substantive change. Well, the fact is, if there is one thing changed on the statute, then it is change. That makes it not law. You can't have, the reason why it makes it not law, ladies and gentlemen, is because if there is a contradiction, then they can't tell you, well, then you to rely on this. If, there's, if they do not agree, and they're supposed to be the same law, then you must omit the other one, not the section that is wrong. It's not a contract. Well, if any part of this is deemed to be this to that, then you don't have to. No, this is that's not the way the law works. You can't have two laws and they contradict each other. Again, remember, they're copying the scriptures. They're copying the way the Bible is done. That's why no scripture contradicts itself. If you find a contradiction in scripture, then you can walk away from that. Okay, King James Version changed 600 verses in the Bible. 600. But that's not the extent. When they decided to replace God's name with Lord, they changed over 7,600. Okay? God's name originally appeared in the Bible over 7,000 times. 7,200 and some odd times. Everybody was supposed to know the name. Now today you have to show people in only six places in the King James where his name is put there. Why put it there six times and not the rest of the 7,200 times? See, the reason why it was in there 7,200 times is because somebody wanted people to use it. But man decided, hey, we're going to do whatever we want to do because that's us. We get to do whatever we want to do. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to keep this act here. I don't know uh, its full benefit, but I am going to say a little prayer for you. That's the song that's in the background. The late, great Aretha. When I was younger, I didn't like this song.
I, I honestly did not like this song when I was younger because it was above my head. Okay, it literally was above my head because of its style and everything. Uh, give me one second. Financial. Codification. Yeah, I can't talk and type anymore. It, it just, my mind won't allow it anymore. No typing, no talking at the same time. Just won't let it, it can't, nope, not gonna, not gonna do it. Won't happen. Okay, let's see. See, now that's, okay, Revision and Codification Act of 1982. It's too late, ladies and gentlemen. If you realize Title 18 was done a lot long uh, before 1982. Has no official short title and no commonly accepted short title. The term Title 31 Revision and Codification Act of 1982. It is not a Title 31. You can't do a Title 31 Revision and Codification Act. Okay? It just, it just doesn't work that way. Okay, but however, what I am beginning to understand, and I believe that we will find that, is this is the budgetcouncil.com. The budget? Interesting. So I believe we will find in there how they do their budgeting to prove that they are who they are. Nobody asked you for a weekly report. Uh, that's, that's my, uh, what do you call that? Apple. Nobody asked them for a weekly report. If I need a weekly report, I'll tell you. Give me a weekly report. Okay. Let's see. Let me pause y'all for a second, okay, while I... Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, they have this thing that's part of 797-258. Please understand, it is STAT 96-923. This is a legislation which prohibits the government from entering into contracts that are not fully funded by the government. So those of you who are making contracts for 800 quadzillion dollars or 26 quadbillion dollars, uh -uh, not fully funded. However, hold on, let me make sure you understand. The obligation of contracts is twofold. Let's give you the first reason. Now this initially was enacted in 1884. Okay, this originally was enacted in 1884. The amount funded by government, the contracts funded by government, government gets to create what? Obligations. They have a duty to an obligation of contract. The Federal Reserve Act allows the printing or creation of monies. So this has nothing to do with that if you know how to argue this, know how to argue that. When the night has come. Sorry, that's the beat in the background. Um, it's the instrumental. It's not the uh, words, but it's in my background. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, the and they they call it the Anti Deficiency Act. Ladies and gentlemen, this thing was originally done in 1884, but in 1950, after the Federal Reserve Act, they thought to change it. Hold on, y'all need to understand. They changed the currency in 1933, which means the original provisions under which this act was done was not the same. Then they changed it again in 1982. So, ladies and gentlemen, the contract was fully funded March 9, 1933. Shh, don't tell nobody. The contract, the New Deal, was fully All right, ladies and gentlemen, now we need to show you why we're doing this video. I think it is not this one. Let's go here. This is the one we need to go to. Ladies and gentlemen, since the Attorney General, and this lawsuit will be filed next week, since the Attorney General has 60 days to determine whether it's going to take over the lawsuit 
and it can take over the lawsuit and then really tank it because but then you go after the attorney general you sue the united states for the ineffectiveness of the attorney general so they can't just tank the case that's the first thing if you bring up a valid case they must pursue it however there was something where they gave the attorney general the right in 1982 to sit up there and deny claims that would cost the government too much money you can't cost the government too much money because the money has been fully funded as of March 9, 1933. Okay, the appropriations are already there to prosecute such suits. It wouldn't cost no more than the suit that they brought against Gotti, no more than the suits they brought against so many other people. They waste money all the time, and they don't bring up that as an issue during those periods. Let's get back to the Attorney General. When the Attorney General says, hey, we're not going to intervene, then that means they're not going to intervene. They can't later say we're going to intervene. Well, somebody else had the same understanding as I, so let's read. The United States Supreme Court recently granted certiorari, certiorari on a petition seeking to curtail the United States Department of Justice's ability to dismiss False Claims Act why TAM cases, even if the Attorney General has determined that the case is likely meritless or will be costly for the government to pursue? The reason why is because it has arresting abilities. The False Claims Act, when you bring a Quai TAM lawsuit under the False Claims Act, remember I saw the same thing. Bringing it under the False Claims Act, man, you better believe I, that's where I'm going. So hold on one second. We got a the song that's playing right now, Billy Withers, ain't no sunshine when she's gone. The late Billy Withers. I am sorry to see that young man go. Billy Withers, just there was something unique about Billy. I never met the man. I don't know nothing about the man. You can tell me the man sat up there and jumped off three bridges and slapped three women on the way down. And ladies and gentlemen, that ain't got nothing to do with me. I, I wasn't there when he did that. If he did that, should he have done that? Why'd he do that? Those are not questions for me. Those are questions for your mama. Okay, so go talk to her about it. But don't come talk to me about it. If I mention something about somebody and I say, you know, I appreciated this about this person or that person, then you let me have my appreciation. If you have a different take, a different stance, then you hold on to that. Let that be you. But don't come in my face talking about, well, no, you got you to gotta feel the way I feel because this is the way I feel. And if I feel this way, you got to feel this way, mother. Okay, get the, out my face with that. Literally. Because your opinion is not my opinion. Okay, it really is that simple. We're going to 978, 958, 73. I see claims, so I think I must be must be past it. Hold on. 974, I ain't past it. Okay, small claims for privately owned property damaged or lost. Okay, claims for damage caused by the Bureau of Investigation. Claims for non-nationals for personal injury or death in a foreign country. Why would you have a non-national? Wait a minute. Hold on. Claim for non-nationals. Ladies and gentlemen, why don't y'all find out what a non-national is? Sorry, just a thought. I, just a thought, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. And I got to save this again because I can't save it. Set off against judgment. The Comptroller of a Currency shall withhold payment paying that part of a judgment against the United States government presented to the Comptroller General. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where your claims are to go. I sent one to them. They ignored me. I'm about to get their attention. That is equal to the debt the plaintiff owes the government. The Comptroller of Currency shall discharge the debt if the plaintiff agrees to the set-off and discharges a part of the judgment equal to the debt. Okay. Ladies and I keep trying to tell you, you have to discharge your debts. Sorry, ain't my ain't my problem. Y'all can go read this, but this is the part that I need to highlight.
but it's not going to let me highlight it. Lean on me. Well, you know what? Uh-uh, hold on. Let me see. I know it's not going to let me copy it because that's not the way it works. So what I want to do is I'm going to try. That's not the way this program works. It definitely don't want me copying it like this. But I'm going to bring all of this because this is what I need. So we're going to copy that and we're going to open this. Hold on now. Okay, first of all, this is me showing all of you that the lawsuit, it's pretty much complete. Just had some proofreading done, and I just have to add some things to it. Okay, and it will not be simple. It is 40 pages long. The Quitam lawsuit allows the attorney general to intervene. If the attorney general chooses not to intervene, then the individual bringing the claim, i.e. the Eon Foundation, that's why I sent that to the Federal Reserve, ladies and gentlemen. I wasn't just sending it under the Eon Foundation to the Federal Reserve just to be sending it. I was sending it because I need to set them up. Just like I told you guys, you need to contact the bank, ask for a copy of your original promissory note. Just ask them to send you a copy. Take that, keep the envelope, keep the original envelope that they sent it in, keep it to the side. That's your evidence that they received, the security. That's your evidence that you paid. You need to understand what's going on here. We're bringing forth this claim. It will be a class action coup time because it represents the interests of the United States. You can join. Okay? You must learn. Okay? This is just, again, me telling you that it's already done. Okay? already done. I'm not going to show you everything else. All right. Now, there's this issue that quiet time lawsuits are supposed to be sealed. Well, I'm representing the interests of the United States. There is no need to seal it. Oh, so it did copy the whole thing. Okay, that, that works. It did copy the whole thing. It actually lets me know this is the public law. All right. I can live with that. I can live with that right there because the only thing I needed was Unless the contract expressly provides otherwise, the assignment is for the entire amount not already paid and made only to one party. See, you can assign your uh, arbitration awards and so forth. You can assign your contracts to other people. <laughs> Wait, hold on. During war or national emergency proclaimed by the president or declared by law or ended by proclamation or law, a contract with the Department of Defense and, excuse me, the General Service Administration the Department of Energy when carrying out the duties and powers formerly carried out by the Atomic Energy Commission or other agency the president designate may provide or may by change without consideration to provide that further payments under the contract to an assignee is not subject to reduction or set off. A payment subsequently due under the contract, even after the war or an emergency has ended, shall be paid to the assignee without the reduction of or set off a liability of the signer. So I guess they've really figured it all out, but this is done in the Trading with the Enemy Act, ladies and gentlemen. Set off against the judgment. Pay attention. Who is the judgment against? It just says set off against the judgment. Arbitration is a judgment. If the government loses a civil action to recover a debt, or recovers less than the amount the Comptroller General withholds under this section, the Comptroller General shall pay to the plaintiff the balance and interest of 6% at the time the money is withheld. Ladies and gentlemen, this is y'all. This is the premise for bringing the lawsuit. We're bringing two. Bringing one against the so-called Federal Reserve. We're bringing another... Sorry, my phone is ringing. This is uh, a Mara Legion. Uh, no, SAA. One... Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I have to call them back, but we're going to go ahead and make sure you guys understand. We didn't do anything with any of our organizations to defraud anybody. We are following the law. It's just 
so many people don't know the law. So they want to sit up there and listen to some judge who, by law, they claim cannot be held liable for their stupidity or for their claims or for their saying this is happening, that's happening. That's a lie. The judge can be completely held liable for their comments. Why? Because they're only protected with judicial immunity when they're acting in a judicial capacity. When they act outside of that judicial capacity, they are no longer protected by judicial immunity. A judge is not allowed to slander you, just as a regular citizen is not allowed to slander you. There's nothing a part of the judicial act that a judge does that says that they can slander you from the record. They are under the same equal provisions of law as that so-called wannabe prosecutor. There must be proof. But it's okay that many of you don't understand what's going on. You don't understand policies and procedures because you're going by codes and other statutes without going by the law. And that's because you don't understand the law. And it's okay. I understand. I understand what the law is. And I get it. Y'all don't understand what the law is. And y'all don't get it. So I say shame on y'all. Sorry, I just turned the fans. I have these 12-volt uh, fans that I got at Walmart that are the same type of fans you see in tractor trailers where the drivers keep themselves cool. Well, I have several of these that I purchased. And they are pointed at the dogs right now. And so... It was a little too much for them for a second when I pointed them directly on them, but they'll get over it. Um, we're back to me turning back on my freezer because we have enough sunlight to keep everything going. It's 9 o'clock, going on 10, so that's usually when the sun is putting out enough amperage for my system to say, oh no, you can keep doing me like this, but before that, it ain't enough, and my system will be beep, 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 beep. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be bringing one suit against the Federal Reserve. That is a very dangerous thing to do because you know how they have gotten with other people who have tried to come their way. So here's the two things that's going to happen. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the act. We have what they're required to do under the act. We have what a security is. We can prove that they're using the act all the time. I can prove that they recognize the act still exists because each one of those provisions that you guys saw in that letter they sent is only dealing with that part of the act. Now, now that we have that, we now, the questions I asked, you saw in the video, that I'm asking them now is how come they're not correcting their agents for not following the law as written? How come they have not documented the deposit of these securities? How come they're foreclosing on these homes when the security has already been satisfied? How come they are not returning the deed? See, these are the questions I'm asking. If you understood about judicial notice and what judicial notice is, then you will understand why I'm asking those questions. Because I'm putting the court on judicial notice as to what the law is, so there'll be no argument. I don't have to explain the law, what, what they say the law is, statutes at large. I don't have to explain that to them. It's not their job to explain it to me. Now, here's the thing. I, I want y'all to take a look at this statute at large. You see this right here? This thing says subsection 3729. Y'all see that, right? So you see... This is not a statute at large. Let's go to it so that you guys can see it for a certainty. See? Petition to the court to take judicial notice. Judicial notice is your best friend when you do it right. Come on now. Uh-oh, I turned one down too many. We're going to get right back to this in a second. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not the public law. The public law doesn't have sections like that, subsections like that, okay? This was done for the codification, purposely for the codification. But hey, it says the statute at large, so we gotta go that, take a look. Title 31 of the US Code, no such thing. You guys need to understand that. 
Title 31 of the U.S. Code is not law. What, you guys don't understand what they were doing? Congress didn't write the code. So it says to revise, codify, and enact without substantive change certain general and permanent laws related to money and finance. They don't get to do that. You see, you guys need to understand, they didn't write the code. They can't later then come in and claim authorship. So what they're doing is they're saying, hey, we're going to make the code law. Nope, sorry, you don't have the authority. Why? Because Congress is acting under their corporate capacity. They have been acting under a corporate capacity since 1929. So nothing they have done has actually been law. But that's okay, ladies and gentlemen. Let's accept it. Let's say this is the law. So now let's use it to our advantage. Let's say, that they're, because remember, they're saying it's the law. Pay attention. They are saying this is the law. Okay, this is the full title of the act. There is no short title. Okay, copy. Now, you just call it money and finance, title 31, money, money and finance. But there is no short title. This is the title. An act to revise, codify, blah, 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 and money and finance. Title 31, U.S. Code, money and finance. Okay? This is prior to 1982. Pay attention. Prior to 1982, I want you all to pay attention. Prior to 1982, the money and finance code was not law. Title 31 was not law. Ain't that interesting, huh? Well, anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be bringing forth information regarding the Federal Reserve and how they and their agents have not been following the law. And since they have not been following the law as written, then they are liable under the law for not following the law as written. They don't have a choice but to follow the law as written. This is, um, it does things like that because of how it's copied. But I can live with that. All right, I got to save this. And we're going to save it. We're going to save it downloads. And we are going to not save it that way. We're going to do V. Aw. One second. While I separate things, I got to do one more and the Nas be finished. Oh, and I got to put that period before DOCX. Sorry. Let me get back over here to my DOCX. All right. It's saved. Oh, save me. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Once the Attorney General says, hey, we're not going to take the case, we decline to intervene, notice this, takeaways and industry impact. On June 21st, 2022, the Supreme Court announced this decision to hear this case right here, in which the relator petitioner raises two issues critical to the DOJ's ability to move for and secure dismissals of False Claims Act QTAM cases under 31 U.S.C. blah, blah, blah. The first is whether the DOJ forfeits its right to move for dismissal of a case if it initially declines to intervene. You see, if it declined, if it decided to accept the case, does an investigation, then it can move the court to dismiss the case. But it doesn't do that. It declines the case. Now, they do this on purpose. They will decline to intervene first whether the DOJ forfeits its right when it declines to intervene. By asking for a dismissal, it's intervening. But it said we're not going to intervene, which means it lied. False Claims Act, huh? The second is the DOJ contain, I mean, retains dismissal authority post-declination. It's the point. What standard of review should the courts apply to a motion to dismiss? In other words, 
is Section 3730C2A hearing merely a form for the relator to try to persuade the DOJ not to dismiss, or is it an adversarial hearing to inform the district court uh, to inform the district court's ruling? That doesn't make that doesn't make sense. Anyway, the Supreme Court upcoming ruling could provide more clarity and more incentive for the DOJ to dismiss meritless and wasteful QTAM actions earlier in litigation, possibly as early as the decision not to intervene. The second issue is the dismissal standard, essentially boils down to how different courts should be to DOJ motions to dismiss QTAM actions. Although the circuit courts have pumigated numerous standards to address the issue, discussed in details below, all pertaining standards for deferration differential to the United States, the real party in the interest of the QITAM action, the Supreme Court decides that the DOJ has an unfeathered right to secure dismissals. As one circuit court ruled, DOJ may be emboldened to dismiss a QITAM action. Alternatively, the Supreme Court could affirm the approach that the other circuit court uh, that the latter filed motion for dismissal is subject to more stringent judicial scrutiny than the DJ, the DOJ, DJ, may be incentivized to seek dismissal of weaker cases earlier in the proceedings, even before the defendant have engaged in the costly exercise of briefing their own motions to dismiss and engage in discovery. Regardless of the exact standard the Supreme Court will adopt, it is it likely to maintain the difference currently afforded the DOJ. Indeed, the DOJ noted in its opposition to the petition for certiorari, no court of appeals has ever held that any particular quiet time action should go forward over a DOJ's motion to dismiss because nobody's ever brought the point that the DOJ, once you decline to intervene, that means you decline to intervene, so now you can't do a motion to dismiss. See, as for the intervention issue, the relator is asking the Supreme Court to find that the DOJ forfeits its ability to later move for dismissal if, the init if it initially declined to intervene in the case. No appellate court has ever accepted that argument, and it is unlikely that the Supreme Court will do so. However, no, this Supreme Court will stick to the law as written, and it will stick to the intent. If the DOJ says, hey, this is a quiet time lawsuit, the only way the quiet time lawsuit moves forward is that the Department of Justice says we're not going to take the case. Then the relator represents the United States. See, if the DOJ could just decide that it's going to dismiss it and move for dismissal and the courts are going to automatically grant the dismissal, then there is no quiet time. They don't exist anymore. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some people bringing forth frivolous quiet times. A lot of people bringing forth frivolous quiet times. Because quiet times are recognized on the state level as well as the district level, federal district. So we're bringing one against the United States, so-called agencies, and we're bringing one against the uh, Federal Reserve. And the final one we're bringing against is the courts regarding arbitrations, failing to follow, follow the arbitration act as written, as the Supreme Court has stated. We'll be doing this on behalf of all of the arbitrations that the courts have been interfering with, whether they were done by SAA or any other arbitration association. Either they have to follow the act as written or they don't. Either the court must grant the award, the motion for confirmation, or they don't. And if that's the case, then that means that prior to any decision saying that they don't have to enforce it means that they did prior to that determination because the previous determination is that they must enforce the contract. So that's what we're getting ready to do. But you better believe that, yes, because I'm doing this not for myself, I don't need this for myself. But because I am doing this, ladies and gentlemen, for all of you, 
this will be very dangerous. Now we're going to be, I'll be doing a video in the next week and a half or so that's going to let people know what we're getting ready to do. And they can be associated directly as John Doe's and Jane Doe's with each of these suits that we're bringing. And they will receive that there's a reward. You get part of the settlement, 25% to 30% for being the relator, and so the relator has the right to share that with the main quote-unquote complainant. Even though the main complainant is the United States, we're going to put all of our names at the top of the instrument so that we're bringing it as a group. We're going to make it a class action quietam. They're not going to be happy with a class action. They're going to say, well, it's the United States. Oh, no, 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 no. See, under the law, the United States has several different definitions. So we're bringing it on behalf of each one of those definitions. Remember, many of you guys have been calling it the United States Incorporated. It's not the United States Incorporated. It's the government of the United States. That's the official title for the corporation, the government of the United States. That's their title. So we're not bringing it on behalf of the corporation. We're bringing it on behalf of the people of the United States of America. Okay, we'll explain all that later. What I had done by pulling up this article, this is the question I wanted to pull in, put in so that you guys understand. Nobody else has done this before. We're going before the Supreme Court itself. Okay, we're going before the Supreme Court itself. Now, what you know, somebody actually tried to sue the Supreme Court at one time, and they said you can't sue the Supreme Court because they have absolute qualified immunity because they're the highest court in the land. Well, they're not the highest court in the land, ladies and gentlemen. Supreme Court is not the highest court in the land. You can sue the Supreme Court through another agency, through the administrative process. They're not the highest court in the land. They're the highest court under the judicial branch in the land. Just like the executive branch has their highest administrative court, and the congressional branch has its highest legislative court. Every branch of government has its highest court. And then you have Judge Wapner. The people have their highest court, known as the People's Court. The people do have their own court, by the way. Sorry, we're not going to go into detail about all that, but you guys just need to understand how government is supposed to be formed and put together. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, I'm going to say K sera sera and let y'all get back to y'all lives, but this is letting you know that the embarking upon these actions it's going to cause a lot of focus and a lot of retaliation. Yes, there will be retaliation, and I'm not too concerned. Just letting you guys, <clears throat> excuse me, allergies. And I've been noticing I've been having allergies lately. Uh, the other day, couldn't stop my eyes from watering. Even now, it's happening. Uh, but allergies and the temperature change, is interesting. We got a heat wave that starts today. Okay, this heat wave apparently is going to be like the other one we had three weeks ago. So I just want y'all to be ready because it's coming and it's heading east. So be ready because this one's supposed to last more than a week. Okay, so y'all needs to be ready. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for taking the time. We will keep you posted and update on updated on these quiet times so that you guys will have an idea of what's going on. And so you'll see that we're going to do the best we can to represent your interest and make things better. Um, the last time I did it, as I told you, they filed that complaint against all the banks. Uh-oh. Wednesday, we're going to be 110. Lord have mercy. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, the heat wave is going to last until next Saturday. And then right after that, there'll be another heat wave starting four days later. So August into September is going to be a scorcher. So just prepare yourselves. Uh, we are about to get hot out here again. That's why I say the dogs will be outside because Wednesdays I'm not here. And so... 
I can't afford to be inside every day of the week. So I choose not to be inside on Wednesdays. Choose to do meetings and all of that stuff. So it's an interesting life. By the way, they're all asleep. They got the fan blowing on them, they are knocked out. And it's a dog pal. So they are all knocked out. And I'm going to do this real quick so that you guys understand. Right now they're color coded. The white dog is next to the brown dog. Then the light brown dog is next to the dark brown dog. Then the white dog is next to the brown and white dog. And then the off colored white tan mixed dog He's off to the corner by himself. Now, that's today that they're rainbow. But on regular days, the two white dogs sleep on next to each other. The two dark brown dogs sleep next to each other. And then the other two that are off-colored, they sleep next to each other. And then the two that are off-colored get to sleep on top of everybody else. I did not teach them segregation. Okay? But that's what I've noticed with them. Hey, everybody, thank you very much. Y'all have a good day, and we will talk. Adios.